Hey folks, what's going on? Today we're going to be taking a look at a bunch of user interface tricks inside of Touch Designer, some of which are new to the 2022 version of Touch Designer, and some of which are long-time questions that I see being asked regularly today. So let's dive right into some of these. So the first UI trick is how to make radio buttons. And this is always an interesting one because it's quite easy to do, but not very well documented in a lot of places. And that combination is a frustrating one. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and make a handful of buttons here. Let's make five of them. And what I want to do is right click and drag, select all of the buttons. And in the button type here, instead of being toggled down, which is the default, and if I hit A to activate my viewer, this means that all of the buttons are essentially working as independent toggles. But in a case of having a radio button, I want to be able to have a selection. So only one of these five buttons can be on at any time. What I can do is with all of them selected, go to the button type, change that to be radio down. Now, this is where the confusing part happens because already these are kind of working. But what we want to do is be very specific because if we start adding other buttons into our network, they're automatically going to get added to this radio selection. So in this case, this is where the button group label and button group DAP parameter come into play. Now, if you have a very simple setup, even something as simple as this, you probably don't even need the specification DAP in this case. All we need to do is create a new label or group and assign that group to all of these buttons. So in this case, with all of these buttons still selected, I can come to my button group label and call this my radios. Now, when I hit enter, all of a sudden, and actually it still was working a little bit before, all of these are going to be working in that kind of fashion of radio button groups. Now the nice thing here is that if I was to add another button, and maybe I also wanted to set that to be a radio and create a secondary set of radio buttons, because I have the left side set of buttons in a group called my radios, going and changing this other set of buttons that are also radios doesn't affect that group. So that's why it's really important. I always recommend you should absolutely set a button group label. Now, let's say you have a setup that's a little bit more complicated, maybe in a case where there's a lot of different buttons or the buttons are changing who is in the group and who isn't in the group. This is where the button group dat can be helpful because what we can do is delete the label that we've assigned here. And I can create a new table dat. And this table dat is essentially going to serve the same function that the parameter for the button group label did. In this case, I'm going to give my table a name so I can call it something like my radio group. And then I'm going to go select all of my buttons in the button group dat parameter, reference my radio group. And then whatever button that I add the name of or path of to this table is now going to be inside of this radio group. So for example, what I can do is add five rows here and then go through and put the names of my buttons here. So buttons one through five, button one, button two, button three, four, and so now we have the same functionality that we had before, which is that these buttons are all looking at this table dat to see who is inside of their radio button group. And anyone who is not inside of that is going to function independently or as a part of a different radio button group. So it's really that easy to set up radio buttons. If it's a really, really simple setup, I always suggest just using the button group label, give all of the buttons the same group, they're going to work fine. It's a little bit more complicated, or maybe you have the buttons spread out in the network. You can use this radio group uh, table situation and put even paths or names of different operators here. So now the next thing we're going to look at is how to add backgrounds to different components now, especially something like a button. So if I make a button, and if you remember, longtime touch designer users are probably going to have this little bit of a struggle recently is... I used to be able to go and make something like a movie file in and I could go to my button. I could go to the look page of parameters and I can drag and drop that onto the background top. And in previous versions of touch designer, this would immediately set that as the background of my button. Now, because of some of the changes happening to the infrastructure of components, especially with the new text comp, which we're going to talk about in a minute, 
this actually doesn't work as well. And what I would suggest going forward for a lot of folks is instead of putting this texture on the kind of parent level button or user interface element to actually go inside of here where we see now there's a text comp. So if you remember before an older version of Touch Designer, even as you know early as last year, it's old in this case, there was a text top in here, which was doing all the things like setting the name of the button, the label, all that kind of stuff. And now there's actually a text comp in here. So what we could do instead is take this texture that we've created, find the text comp inside, and then set our texture as the background of this, which is going to give us that same functionality where we have our texture background, as well as the general button stylings all activated. So that's just a quick one, especially if you're a longtime user, you might be confused the first time you try and do something that used to work very well. And now you have to go just a little bit deeper to get that to work. Now, the next thing that's very useful to check out is especially for long time touch designer users. If we ever made slider comps, we always knew that there was no reason to change the slider type because half the time, frankly, it didn't really do that much. Now, I'm happy to say with the new version of Touch Designer, this slider type actually works fantastically. And I always recommend from now forward, people check it out because especially if you want to change between having a horizontal slider, a vertical slider, or a 2D slider, the easiest way to do that is now using this parameter. Back in the day, you've probably seen also all kinds of tutorials where people showed you how to manually change a you know, horizontal slider into a vertical slider, rehack the innards, but now it's all automatic, thankfully. So we could see, for example, if I put a null chop on the end of my slider here, I have a working normal slider horizontal. If I change my type to slider V, now I automatically have a fantastic working vertical slider. And if I went and did something like maybe changed the width and height here, that's gonna make more sense visually. But what I could also do is let's say, set this to 200 by 200, and then set my slider to be a UV slider. And the great thing is you can see it automatically updates the knob that's gonna be interactive. It automatically updates the channel outputs and also gives us these value parameters which control and are kind of bound to the actual knob itself. So this is really great. It's just a quick tip, especially for folks that have been using Touch Designer for a long time. We kind of have it ingrained in our muscle memory that we have to build these things manually. But lo and behold, this is a really great update because now we can just do that with the click of a few buttons. We can bounce between horizontal, vertical, and 2D sliders. Now, the last thing that's a really great thing, especially for long time Touch Designer users, because it's all too common that even folks like myself, we get used to doing things one way and we never explore the new or other ways of doing things. And that is how do we work with text that's going to end up inside of a user interface? Long time folks who have been using Touch Designer are used to doing something like setting up a container, going inside, making a text top, you know, going through all these steps, setting the dynamic resolution values that match the container, setting the background. There's a lot of steps. But now there's a really, really, really great new component called the text comp. And the text comp is fantastic because not only does it simplify that whole workflow, but it opens up a couple of new and interesting ones. So for example, even just by default, what it does is it gives us a really sharp piece of text that's being rendered um, and available inside of the component. You can go inside and see there's nothing really inside of there. So it's nice and clean, doesn't take any extra processing. Now, the nice thing is what it actually does on top of just this ability of giving us an automatically scaling piece of text for our user interfaces is that there's also this really cool edit mode. So for example, what we could do is right now it's set to edit mode locked. And what that means is if I activate my viewer, I could click inside of there and nothing would happen. So this was if you were gonna make a header bar or a piece of your user interface, you didn't want the user editing, but in our interactive world, having things be interactive is a lot of fun. So what we could do is switch this edit mode to something like editable. And what that means is now this exact same structure of component that we have can now be clicked on by the user. We can see we got a nice little blinking cursor and they can actually go inside there and start typing all kinds of things. So this is a great way for us to create interactive text dialogues on screen. The nice thing is you'll see that once I click outside of here and deselect this component, 
it's going to update the text parameter that is visible right here in that components parameters. Now that's nice, but we might think to ourselves, oh, but what if the user's uh, editing and we want to really capture all that stuff in real time? The great folks of Derivative have also thought of that as well. So in this edit mode, what we can do is switch it from just regular editable to editable continuous update. Now this is really cool because I think this is something that a lot of folks have wanted for a long time. And hopefully now that we have it in the text comp, it'll start to appear in other places in Touch Designer. But essentially what this does is allows us to, even as we're active inside of the viewer doing things, you can see that the text parameter here is being updated in real time with every interaction. Now this is really cool because this means that all of the other elements of this infrastructure are also being dynamically updated. And what I mean by that is that there's a whole callback system here. So that means as a user is inside of your kind of interactive text component doing any kind of text edit, you can have them be really fluidly, fluently editing the text while you're behind the scenes collecting whatever you need or doing even cool graphics on top of every keystroke. All of those things become really easy and really straightforward. So I highly recommend taking a look at the text comp. It's definitely one of the new components that I think has probably been a little bit slower to get picked up just because and I'm guilty of this, like anybody folks like me who have done things a different way for a long time are a little bit hesitant to dive into new components like the text comp, but I'm very excited for it. And I think that'll get you a few nice tricks with user interfaces and touch designer. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.